Well, today's video is sponsored by Black Gold Compost Company. We want to thank the good people over at Black Gold for their generous donation of all this black cow cow manure that we're using in our video today. Thank you for sponsoring our channel. Well, good morning, friends. Today's video is going to be on growing spaghetti squash. We'll be right back after the break. <music> Well, welcome back. I got my spaghetti squash seeds planted in my seed starting cups. So they're basically uh, ready to head over to the, to the seed starting rack and get started. But I got these seeds at johnnyseed.com. So if you want to uh, try out some of this spaghetti winter squash, check out Johnny Seed and uh, get you some seeds. Give it a shot this year in your spring garden. And like I said, this is a winter squash, so a lot of people, um, they always think when you first say winter squash, they say, oh, that's something I grow in the winter time, but it's actually just the opposite. It's something that you grow in the spring and it grows all summer and you harvest it in the fall and then you cure it out for storage and then um, it's ready to eat in the, in the winter time. So it gives you a, a nice tasting squash that you can uh, enjoy in the winter time when you can't grow the summer squash. Gets you through to the next season. But anyway, this year, uh, you know, I've been having a lot of trouble with, uh, with my health. Well, a little bit of trouble with my health. And uh, this year I got diagnosed as diabetic. So, you know, the first thing they tell you when you become diabetic is you can't have all this and all that, all the good things that you really like. And one of the things that, that is really bad for diabetics is pasta because it converts into too much sugar. And I was really disappointed in that because I really like Miss Nancy's um, spaghetti. I always have. But uh, she said, you know, don't worry about that. Go ahead and grow some spaghetti squash and I can, I can get those noodles up out of that, uh, that squash and I can make the sauce and go on there. And to tell you the truth, I think you'll like it better than pasta. I said, well, if it's going to taste better than that, I'm all for growing it. So anyway, <laughs> that's what I'm doing this year. I've got the seeds in here. What we can expect with this spaghetti squash is an 88 day time period before it'll be ready to harvest. And um, the fruits that you're going to get off of these are anywhere from three to five pounds. So it's really a uh, you know, not that big of a squash. So it's really pretty good size that me and Nancy could cook a couple of them. And that would be a great meal, just two of them, one for me and one for her with her spaghetti sauce. So the, these squash should really, you know, stretch a good ways for us in our, in our groceries. So anyway, I'm going to plant these um, out in the, uh, out in the uh, melon, uh, bed out there because I want to have plenty of room for these things to spread so I'm going to keep them at least the spacing at least six feet apart and that'll give them plenty of room to run out there and produce the fruit I don't want the vines to tangle up with each other and cause mildew problems I want to have plenty of ventilation in between all these plants and open air so they can uh, dry out from getting wet they have plenty of room and air and ventilation to dry out and um, this has a um, oblong shaped uh, fruit on it it's kind of ivory skinned um, and it'll change to kind of a pale yellow when it's at maturity so that's when you know it's about ready to eat and um, it, what you do is you'll harvest this and then you sun cure it for five to seven days and we'll go through that whenever we get to that point. Once it's been sun cured for, you know, about a week or so, then we take it in, we'll put it in the pantry and some, and some shelves and it's ventilated and kind of cool in there and um, let it cure for about two months. And after two months, that, that squash should be ready to eat and it should hold up very well in long-term storage for several months. So that's the game plan on uh, the spaghetti squash. And um, I'm sure that uh, when we get to that point, Miss Nancy will cook us some up and we'll taste test it together and see how we like it. So 
let's get these over in the seed starting rack because I'm getting hungry just talking about it. Okay, there's our spaghetti squash. Got it in the uh, seed start rack. Let's let this stuff get to germinating and we'll monitor the progress of this all the way through till we make us a meal together on uh, spaghetti squash spaghetti. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Well, welcome back, friends. It's been about a week since we started our spaghetti squash and our little seed starting trays and uh, got them out here under the um, seed starting rack. I just wanted to give you a little up close look today and let you see the status of these little babies. You can see if you look up close, the codlin leaves have appeared. And if you look in between the codlin leaves, you can see a very small true leaf starting to emerge, which is a very good sign. So we're gonna um, give these about another week or so. And within that next seven to 10 days, those true leaves should be up and open and really starting to collect that sun, sunshine. And at that point, we'll be moving them over to the um, hardening table right next to the rack here. And we'll get these things hardened off and uh, be ready to take it to the next step. So we'll be back in uh, seven to 10 days. We'll take another look at where we're at and uh, what we're going to do to get these things out there started to take. Give me one more step to fighting this battle with diabetes. Be back soon. Well, welcome back and good morning, Homestead family. Our spaghetti squash has been growing for 15 days. We had this um, out in the seed starting rack 15 days ago. We planted a seed and it's been growing well. I've had it out here on the uh, hardening table behind me here for about the last week. And if you'll come up and take a close look at this, you can see that each one of these uh, plants now have at least two true leaves on each plant. And that's the point where I usually tell myself, go put that plant out in the garden and get it going, get it out of the cups. So um, today's plan is um, I'm going to be planting these and uh, I'm going to use the trellis. I mean, the last time we talked, when I first started out, my plan was to plant this over here in the melon patch and give them plenty of room to run because, you know, they do have some you know, long runners anywhere from six to 12 feet long. But uh, since then, I filled up the trellis, I mean the uh, melon patch full of sugar baby watermelon and butternut squash, as well as some new savor melons we're trying. And I just don't want to crowd this stuff up if I really don't have to. So I decided instead of putting them over there, I'm just gonna put them on the trellises. And there's really nothing wrong with um, um, growing these on a trellis, I, I don't think, in my opinion, my humble opinion, uh, the fruits that come off of this are, you know, they're oblong fruits and they're not that big. They're really not that much bigger than the Asian melons, you know, Nancy's Chummy that we grow over there. And we, we've ever, never had any problems with that. Folks have concerns about growing um, fruits that big on a trellis because if the the fruits hanging and, and the, the stem going to the fruit is going over the trellis, it kinks. It tends to kink if, if the fruit is heavy. So what they do is they take a piece of pantyhose and they put the fruit inside the pantyhose and tie it to the trellis and let the um, fruit expand as it grows. And it's at that point supported by the you know, the trellis, to the trellis with a pantyhose or, or some netting. And that's a cool thing to do. It might be an option that we'll hold back on. So if I uh, get these going and I see any of that happening, I can always order some of those uh, melon nettings from um, Amazon or anywhere like that. They, they're cheap and they don't take long to get. And I can, uh, if I see that problem starting to occur, we'll fix it by hanging them. But we'll, we'll cross that bridge if and when we get to it. Okay. 
So today, um, my plan is, is I'm going to go over to this trellis. Remember our trellis garden, we're, we're still kind of under construction. I had to stop work on some of that because of the inflation and some of the prices on material was just way beyond me and Nancy's reach. So uh, we did one irrigation job already, you know, so we have to uh, wait until the next year to try to do another branch of the uh, irrigation system. And we'll be doing that in, in next year. So for this year, we're going to have to um, hand water this uh, trellis, but which is really not that big of a deal. I can do it. I've done it before. So that's how we're going to water it. The, the, the area that we're going to be using has never been planted in. So that bed is, um, you know, full of weeds and grass. So I have some dirt work ahead of me. I got to go over there and get that stuff out of there. I'm going to use my cultivator and try to grind it and cut it and chop it up a little real good and then try to rake it out the best I can. And then, of course, we've got Florida sandy soil in that thing, and there is re really zero nutrients in the bottom of that a trellis. So I'm going to have to amend it this first time with some triple 10, 10, 10, 10 fertilizer. I'll go down, down the trellis and I'll mix that in and uh, incorporate that into that sand with uh, the cultivator. And then I'm going to add a layer of uh, black cow cow manure on there, get that about four inches thick or so. And then we'll incorporate that in with that sand and that triple 10 to see if that can't give it a little bit of uh, a life and give these things a fighting chance to survive that first planting in those um, trellises or or any of my raised beds that I have to uh, amend like that is usually kind of hard it, it don't have a lot to feed on so uh, the the first the first planting is usually not as good as I want it to be but the second time I use the trellises or the raised beds after I have amended it it seems to do just fine so anyway, that's our plan today. Uh, let me go ahead and get this job started because it's, it's kind of a lot of work and I want to get it done early before it gets too hot. And uh, the sooner I get it done, the better. So let's get started.
Well, there we go. That seems like an awful lot of work for just 11 plants, don't it? <laughs> but it'll be well worth it next, uh, this coming winter when uh, Miss Nancy breaks out some of this uh, spaghetti squash and makes me some spaghetti on one of our date nights because I really like her spaghetti sauce. And um, I think this might be a, a good alternative to some of our pasta dishes. So anyway, um, we're off and running with this. We'll keep our eye on this in the days ahead. Um, I'm hoping that uh, this will grab a hold of this trellis fairly easy. I may have to come back and do a little tying, but uh, that's no big deal either. We'll stay on top of it and uh, we'll watch this all the way out until we harvest. We'll see you soon. Well, yesterday we were talking about need to tie up this uh, the spaghetti squash, and uh, Miss Nancy, she she um, created a little space in her busy schedule to help me, because <laughs> this is actually a two-person job, and the way that we have our trellis set up, it makes it real easy if you have two people, because I can get on one side of the trellis and I can hold up the vine to the trellis and she can take a piece of this garden twine and she can reach right through it and tie it on. Look, take a look at the garden twine up close. You see it's a fairly thick piece. It's about one eighth of an inch in diameter. It's, it's a pretty thick piece of garden twine and you can get this any old garden center or um, package store. This is very common. And what we do is uh, we cut off a piece about that long and we tie onto the uh, stem of the plant and you tie it up against its trellis and you don't have to tie it tight like we do with our uh, thornless blackberries. This all you have to do is just loosely get it up there. It's just got to hold it close to the trellis, close enough so the tendrils can do their thing. Mm. So we got a lot of it to do, and usually what we do is at the same time, if we see any of the leaves that are uh, look like they're gonna get a little bit of um, a fungus or mildew or anything like that, because they are susceptible to that, we usually cut that off and take it and throw it in a burn pit and get it far away from our trellises so it doesn't spread. And um, a lot of times we trim up the bottom of the uh, plants just a little bit, get them about six or eight inches above the ground. That way when we hand water, we can stick the wand right underneath all of it and just water right at the roots and never splash anything. And then after we get all that done, um, Miss Nancy will come back and, you know, whenever you got another, <laughs> another break, uh, she, she takes a couple of tablespoons of uh, baking soda, puts it in a gallon of water in her little sprayer and she'll come around here and she'll spray all these uh, melons, all of our cucumbers, every, anything that's a, a melon type plant, she'll spray it with that baking soda and it uh, prevents um, you know, this powdery mildew problem that we get, you know, especially if you get a lot of rain. <laughs> so you got a little bit of work to do and so do I. So mm -hmm. We'll get it done. Let's get to it. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. 
there we go. We got uh, the first piece of a trellis done with the uh, spaghetti squash. Of course, we got three more trellises to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's a lot of trellises here. But uh, what we did today will make this um, spaghetti squash just explode. It has plenty of room to grow and it's not tangled up with each other. It reduces the mildew problem and it gives it plenty of sunlight to all the leaves instead of um, it tangling itself and casting shade on itself, which causes part of the mildew problem. So having it up like this, it gets better sun filtration. It also gets better airflow coming through the trellis, which keeps that mildew down. So everything we can do to keep that mildew off of it, we want to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Miss Nancy will come out here and spray this down next uh, couple of days or so with the uh, baking soda solution. And these spaghetti squash should be a huge difference next time we give you an update. So we'll see you soon. Well, welcome back, friends. Our spaghetti squash has been out here on the trellis for seven weeks, and it's really making some really pretty good strides. Um, me and Nancy came out here last week and we tied up some of the long runners just to give them a little helping hand to get up on this trellis. And uh, in the last week, man, they've shot out dozens of these long runners. So it's time for us to come out here and tie them up again. And uh, that's just something we have to do with this kind of a plant. You have to give it a little help. It does have the tendrils on there, but you need to help it get up on there because it's kind of a heavy, um, it's kind of a heavy stem on it, so you know you got to help it because it tends to want to crawl laterally across the ground. So we're pushing it up this trellis to make it do something that's really not exactly natural to it, but it's a good way to grow it to save space. So that's what we're doing. If you look up close, you can see that um, some of the plants are already producing little baby squash. They're starting to come out, and we have um, plenty of blooms. Uh, coming out and I just see the bee act activity over here every morning when I'm out here working the bees are just doing their job so um, I'm pretty pleased with the progress of the uh, spaghetti squash out here on the trellis and we'll keep our eye on it in the days ahead we'll come out here and get this uh, trellis uh, tied up and we'll take another look at it in probably about three or four w more weeks and should be getting pretty excited at that point so We'll see you soon. Well, welcome back, friends. Our spaghetti squash has been out here growing for nine weeks today. And uh, if you'll remember a couple weeks ago, me and my little buddy here, we came out here and we tied up all these vines up on the trellis. And, and since then, they have exploded as predicted. They, they are really doing great and they're putting on fruit all over. So we were really excited about that. And then uh, a couple of days ago, Miss Nancy came out here and harvested a whole bunch of cucumbers to take to uh, the little soup kitchen donation to help folks that are in need. And um, she noticed a couple of pickle worms. So she came and told me and I said, oh no. So we came out and we checked and make sure none of the cucumbers had any pickle worms, uh, you know, that we were gonna be donating to help folks. So they were all clean and it was only just a few but when we came over and looked at the spaghetti squash, very disappointing, almost every single one of them have got a pickle worm. And uh, all the years I have been gardening, I have never encountered pickle worms. I guess I've been lucky and blessed because a lot of people always ask me, what do you do about pickle worms? I said, well, I don't really have a problem with them. Well, this year we do. <laughs> so um, if you've never seen a pickle worm, I want to show you some of the damage up close so you know what to look for. Um, some folks call these things rind worms because, you know, allegedly they'll drill into the 
the skin of the fruit and they only just stay in the rind and, and people say, well, you can still eat them because they only go through to the rind. Well, I don't think that's altogether true. <laughs> I think they will drill in as far as they just feel like going. So to, to us, whenever we see something like that on one of our plants, we want to take action to uh, try to find a cure and we want to remove all that, that infested material off of the plant. So let me show you one of these um, spaghetti squash up close. And I want to show you what the damage looks like so you can be uh, on the lookout. Make sure you can see this okay. Is that a, That's good, hon. It's not blurry, is it? No, it's good. If you will look real close right in here, you will see some little tiny holes drilled into that. And there's a little worm right there. You see a worm? Oh my, there it is. Let's mm -hmm. see. Can you see that okay? Mm hmm I can see it okay. Well, look at that little rascal right there. Little, go back a little bit, hon. Uh, that should be more like Can it. you see that little worm? Mm -hmm. I hope it's coming into focus. Mm -hmm. That's what they look like. That's the little young larvae. Mm -hmm. And they'll get much larger than that because they're just getting started good. But you'll see these little holes drilled into your fruit and you'll see some of the fecal matter squirted out. It looks like it's oozing out something on your plant or on your fruit, and that's what that is. That's the fecal matter from that little rascal right there. Mm -hmm. Give Pickle worm. The, give it to the chickens. Yep, so what we're gonna do today, the game plan today, is we're gonna go through and pick off all this contaminated fruit. We'll split it open and feed it to our chickens so it's not a total waste, and I'm sure they'll enjoy every pickle worm they can find but uh, we'll feed this to the chickens and beings that the uh the 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 trellis has only it's only uh you know june now it's only nine weeks and this will grow all summer and we don't harvest this out until october or so so as far as i'm concerned this thing has covered with blooms it'll have plenty of time to recover if we just get rid of the pickle worms. So what we're gonna to do today is pick off all these little contaminated fruit and we're gonna spray the entire trellis with a solution of one tablespoon of baking soda, one tablespoon of Thuracide BT to one gallon of water. And that will do two things at the same time for me. It takes care of a little bit of powdery mildew that's trying to get started. And that BT is an organic way to get rid of the worms. So once we get rid of the worms and we get this under control, I'm sure in a couple, two or three weeks, we can come back out here, do another update. And I think we'll be right back where we were today. So we'll uh, be making a full recovery and we'll come back and check that. So. Let's get busy getting these fruits off and feeding the chickens and getting this sprayed down and uh, get this plan of action of our jihad against the uh, dreaded pickle worm.
Well, the, the pickle worms got all of them except for one, and that's this one right here. But um, it's gonna be just like any other squash, I'm afraid, that if you pick some of the fruit off of it, it's just gonna make more. So I don't think there's really anything to be really too terribly concerned with, being that we caught it here early. Spraying this with the BT right now will not do anything to uh, cure the worms that are already inside the fruit. It won't do that. But if they're on the outside of the plants and they're trying to get, make their way in and they start to, uh, you know, eat some of the foliage, some of the stems, some of the, anything, they'll die, you know, very quickly. So um, the only thing we can do right now is get the old fruit off, spray it down real good, and let's make a second start at it and then take a second run at it, you know. So. Um, I think we're going to do just fine. Miss Nancy's spraying it right now. She'll go down one side and then she goes down the other to make sure she gets both sides of the leaves. Being up on a trellis like this makes that real easy to do. Well, today's activity with the pickle worm is coming to a close. So we got the chickens fed and I think they were pretty happy to get them. Mm -hmm. And as a fitting in for that pickle worm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So anyway, we'll be back in a couple of weeks. We'll take a look at the recovery plan and see how we're doing on the spaghetti squash because I'd like to have some spaghetti with it. So we'll see you soon. Well, welcome back, friends. If you've never been humbled in your life, plant yourself a garden with some spaghetti squash down here in the deep south, and the pickle worm will bring you to your knees, didn't he? <laughs> Definitely did. You know, I always say in gardening, just don't give up, keep on trying, and uh, me and Nancy, we gave it a, a honest effort. I mean, we took all the fruit off when we discovered the worms. We treated it with BT, spin aside, neem oil. We've done everything we could do in the last three weeks. The plants are doing fine. They started producing fruit again. And we came out and took a look at them and they're drilling holes in them again. So it's pretty much futile at this point. I mm -hmm. think we pretty much need to just pull the plug. You know, we had 101 degrees yesterday, so we're getting late in the summer now. And, uh, you know, at this point, there's no sense to keep on struggling with this. I want to get them on out because, you know, not only are the worms destroying my spaghetti squash, they're starting to venture out into um, my savor melons and also her chummy. And once they get in that chummy, boy, that's it. That's the oh boy. <laughs> we're not having that. <laughs> That's jihad. <laughs> That's jihad there, buddy. So anyway, we're, um, mm -hmm. I think we're just going to pull the plug on this. If you live further north than Florida, uh, it's, actually I've heard of pickle worms being a problem up into the Carolinas as well. But uh, if you're up northern area of the country, uh, I wouldn't change anything about the way I planted these. They, they grew just fine. They produced fruit just fine. It's that pickle worm. That moth lives down in South Florida, and um, it will come up uh, north. I've, I've heard of them going all the way up in the Carolinas. So, you know, watch out for them. I think if you're up north, you, you shouldn't have a problem at all with them. But they're definitely a, attracted to spaghetti squash. So anyway, I guess that's it for this year. Um, if you've got any ideas on how to uh, prevent and or uh, cure a pickle worm problem, leave me a comment because <laughs> I am clueless. Uh, I have heard of putting the insect net over the whole trellis until, you know, all the flowers have bloomed and start to produce the fruit. But uh, I just didn't want to go that route. But um, I, I, I guess I was just looking for an easier way. <laughs> mm -hmm. But anyway, we thank you for watching. I hope you learned something out of this video, even though we had a, you know, a crop failure, I, I guess you could say. But we we want to bring you the good and the bad sometimes. So just to let you know, hey, everybody suffers a setback in the garden once in a while. Mm -hmm. Just don't give up. So anyway, we thank you for watching. I hope a video brought a smile to your face and a little joy to your heart. So tell me and Nancy see you next time. Always remember, by, by his hands. hands 
we are fed. fed. Give, Give us, Lord, our daily bread. bread. Amen. Have a blessed day.